and not forgetting polycystic ovarian syndrome as a cause of infertility in women some people call it because your sperm donor but why would you want yourself to get to that point of being isospermic when you can just listen to your wife and you guys can both sort medical help please men hello everyone welcome back to my channel dr essay here so today i will be discussing about female and male infertility why do young couples stay years waiting not achieving pregnancy today we will be talking about all of that the first on my list the first on my, on my list i'm not following no books now this is dr s's courses it is ignorance ignorance if you have a pen and a paper write in capital letter ignorance sometimes or many times some couples do not even have problems they are just ignorant of the fact that ovulation is happening on their period where they are calculating their fall they are just ignorant of the fact that that smoking can reduce sperm count so ignorance when you get a light change about your problems fertility issues will start to reduce so aside ignorance we are going to be talking about age we all know that a woman has a biological clock the reason parents start getting worried if after 30 years of age their female babies are not saying i want to get married or i want to bring men home they are worried because they understand that a woman gets to that age and she finds it difficult to achieve pregnancy just like another person who is less or younger than 30 years of age so from age 35 a woman start finding it a bit difficult but there are some 35 years who still get pregnant perfectly there are some 40 years and 45 years old women who still get pregnant without assistance aside um, age we're talking about hormone problems if you are having problems with your progesterone your progesterone is too low pregnancy will not happen we all know that progesterone is responsible for menstrual irregularity uh, menstrual regularity i call it the baby's hormone yes the baby's hormone because it is the hormone that take over responsibility after the sperm has successfully fertilized the egg and implantation is to happen so aside hormone problems yes we have not talked about fsh which is the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone follicle stimulating hormone like the name implies is that hormone that stimulates the ovary to produce healthy follicles that will mature maturity having two millimeter every day and of course the almighty luteinizing hormone this hormone is the one that finalizes ovulation that ensures that hormone that was produced by the follicle stimulating hormone finally attains ovulation are we good about hormone problems so again adhesions will cause problems with getting pregnant Additions, additions, additions. I'm thinking with this because it is very, very common. Why? Because a lot of women will not understand that a D and C in aborting a pregnancy is not the is not a Y. Hollow uterus, a uterus that should be like this on a norm, is now closed because of adhesions. When addition happens, that's hollow formation in the uterus is no longer there. Then again, some causes can be as a result of sexually transmitted disease. We have two very important sexually transmitted diseases to talk about. It is the gonorrhea and the chlamydia. These two STDs, STIs, are responsible for pelvic inflammatory disease and it poorly treated or non-treated pelvic inflammatory disease can cause your fallopian tube to be blocked. So what is even a pelvic inflammatory disease? It's an ascending infection that affects um, 
that causes inflammation of the reproductive organs like the cervix. It causes the cervix to be inflamed, it causes the tubes to be inflamed, it causes the ovaries and the endometrium in the uterus to be inflamed. Once these organs are inflamed and you do not treat properly, of course, there will be issues. For the fallopian tube, the thing that happens is that your fallopian tubes will be blocked. Fibroid, many ladies have asked what causes fibroid, my darling. Now only God if he answers some kind question. Being an African woman predisposes you to having fibroid. And again, there's this conception that when your womb stays idle for too long, fibroid has no choice than to grow in it when a baby does not grow. So fibroid can cause um, uh, infertility in women. There are some fibroid that is located posteriorly and some fibroid that is located in the endometrium or some fibroid that is compressing the endometrium but not necessarily in the endometrial space. Once the fibroid is compressing your endometrium, is distorting your endometrium, is inside your endometrial itself, of course pregnancy will not be possible. Why? Because the endometrium is that special space that is reserved solely for your fetus to be implanted on. The reason why nothing must distort it. So if you have a pelvic scan that shows a terrain fibroid, please ladies, check to see that the fibroids are not distorting your endometrial. Your endometrial must be intact and measuring from eight to 12 mm aft in your luteal phase. Not when you just saw your period or when you are approaching your ovulation. Okay, aside hormone problems, some form of eating disorder where some persons tend to eat a lot, causing them to be so obese. Obesity and not eating well, having um, underweight can cause infertility in women. What else, what else, what else? Have we talked about everything? Have we talked about D and C? We have talked about DNC and talked about um, adhesions can be formed after a DNC. Yes, aside uterine adhesions, pelvic adhesions can form. Then yes, I must not forget to talk about abnormal menstrual flow. Some women have very heavy flow which affects the endometrium and some women have very scanty flow which also affects the endometrium. Your endometrium can be very thin because it, for pregnancy, for a baby, for a fetus to implant in it, it must be taken off. I told you earlier, eight to 12 millimeter. It must be around that value for pregnancy to happen. So if your endometrium is thin, pregnancy will not happen. If your endometrium is too thick, there will be an issue. So it is very important that after ovulation, in your luteal phase, you go for your scan to be sure that your endometrium is growing, proliferating normally. So if your flow is scanty, please check that your endometrium is thick enough or is, is not so thin and also be sure to rule out what they call Asherman syndrome. Asherman syndrome is the same thing like um, uterine adhesion after a D and C. The reason we advise against D and C, no woman in her in her senses these days after reading the, the, the side effects of D and C will still want to opt forward. There are other methods to get rid of your pregnancy if you must, but Dr. S solely kicks against abortion. If there is um, Asherman syndrome, your doctor will have to perform an additional lysis or you have to go for a, um, a uterine um, hysteroscopy to help you break down your adhesion so that that hollow uterus can come back to its form to the way it was made for pregnancy to happen in. Scarring will make your uterus like this and prevent your period from coming normally but when an additional lysis is done or a hysteroscopy is done your uterus returns back 
endometrium with some medications endometrium will, will be proliferated again and pregnancy can be achieved now for the main infertility number one on my list is going to be varicose almighty varicose because varicose be doing the most lately on men's infertility varicose is the enlargement of the veins that supplies the testes we all know that all organs in our body are alive because of blood supply so if there's shutdown of blood supply on any organ that organ is then dead so when there's enlargement of the veins that supplies these testes there will be abnormal flow of blood to this organ that test is you see those two balls that make you a man that is where sperm production happens if the testes is not getting enough blood flow there will be reduction in sperm quality and quantity the reason if you are having varicose uh, seen on a scrotal scan your doctor will advise you to go for surgery if Spend boosting medications he or she has given you is not working for you because the more you boost your sperm, the more these incompetent veins, these dilated veins, they, they emit heat that constantly kills your sperm. So varicose, I just call it sperm killer. Any result I say of varicose, oh sperm killer, like I hate that pathology. It constantly kills your sperm. So your doctor is trying to make your sperm come up. Those incompetent veins produces heat that keep chopping 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 the sperm so guys it is important that you cool your testers with cold water you can read more about that or i can make a lecture next time about cooling of the testes this helps the, the testes temperature when varicose is bringing heat you are bringing cold if you can do this two three times in a day you'll be helping your testers a great day this is especially for everyone every man who's who's got a varicose but generally it is advisable that men once in a while should cool their testers overheating of the testes you are wearing a very tight cutting pants and staying in um, a driving position for a long time sitting for too long can overheat your testes the more heat your testes produce the more your sperm chopulates hormone imbalance is also seen in the men hormone imbalance are you aware that when a man's prolactin is high the main hormone which makes him a man which is called testosterone can be reduced if prolactin is high prolactin is more of a of a woman's hormone i told you earlier that prolactin is the hormone produced in the pituitary gland that is responsible for the lactation of um responsible for the production of breast making lactating mothers some men have it in very high amount even higher than a woman's value when this happens of course your testosterone will be reduced and that is the testosterone you need everything that happens in our body is being aided by hormones so testosterone in turn helps with this production of sperm so if testosterone is low how will sperm be produced so check your um, serum testosterone to be sure it is good enough check your prolactin to be sure it is good enough if you do not understand the result please take it to see a doctor and then on descended testes this basically happens in childhood some parents give birth to their male child and for me as a doctor i usually advise my patients who give birth to male child especially in my hospital to always assess their baby's testes when they are born not just immediately ahead when they are growing like they are breastfeeding they are playing with the child be sure to touch those two balls because it is very important if you miss that as your mother and you could not help your child get his testes back probably from it, a surgery that will be performed later in his life when he's a bit grown you would have done a lot of damage to that man because that testes are his vital organs as a man because it will help him make that family which is so crave for later in future so as a man you must as a woman i mean who has given birth to a baby boy you must check your baby's testes to be sure that there is no form of undescended testes as a man if you smoke and drink too much you are telling your your <laughs> your hormones i don't want 
I want less of male homo, I want more of women homo. So the more you drink, the more your prolactin will be high. The more you drink, you will start even releasing, <laughs> utilizing homo and follicle stimulating homo, which you don't need. So it's your body, if your body is flooded with female hormones, how will your male hormones even function properly? So please, if you must drink, drink responsibly. Do not drink so much because too much of everything is actually bad. And as a man, if while growing up you had an accident and it affected your testes, it can hinder pregnancy in the long run because the testes, the testes is that organ that is responsible for the production of sperm. So please, men, guide your testes, stay away from so much alcohol. If you are a drug addict, please, it will do you no good, especially when it comes to you fathering a child, because at the end of the day, everything you do to your health will come back to you, whether you like it or not. If you take care of your health, of course, you will have your spend to thank you. And again, too much of exercise for a man, it is not good. When you exercise too much, you spend hours in the gym producing sweat because you want to lose some weight or you want to get some six packs. It is not so good for your fertility. If you have had surgery in the past, in your groin area, in your testicular area, when getting married, please communicate with your wife and she can in turn help you visit a doctor or you both can visit a doctor to ascertain why there is problem with you not getting pregnant and some some accidents that happen around that area can even cause a man to have erectile problem so if you are having this problem i think as a man if you have caught somebody your better half you should be able to relate with that person you should be able to talk to that person on ways to make your sexual health better so men women are not only the causes of infertility as much as we have a lot of factors surrounding why a woman shouldn't achieve pregnancy there are also a lot of factors like i've mentioned surrounding why a man should not have um, um should not father a child you can't say you can i can give an example a man who has fathered first and second child can have problems fathering the third child or the fourth child do not say because you have fathered two children from the same woman, she's having problems with the third child and the problem is solely yours. Please, the both of you should act as, as one. You are a team now and you should it should be you against every other person. Together you guys should find out what is the problem. Visit a good doctor, not just any doctor. Your infertility issues will be made clear to you and everyone will understand where their problems are. Are coming from if a woman have an issue I am not sure a woman has any issue that have not been able to be sorted out via medical means technology is everywhere now if no hope for that spend anymore they are spent donor but why would you want yourself to get to that point of being isospermic when you can just listen to your wife and you guys can both sort medical help Please, men, when your wife tells you, let's go to the hospital, it's important that you listen to her because I'm not sure she can harm you or take you to the wrong place, knowing fully well that the both of you actually need this child. And not forgetting polycystic ovarian syndrome as a cause of infertility in women. Some people call it PCOS, some people call it PCOS. This one. I will settle down to make a beautiful lecture of it. You're going to love that lecture.